out of interest, who taught you? Because I love, I love listening to you and reading when you say the whole Now that that's a that's a particularly tosser way of saying that you're very very well. <laughs> well, actually, um, where, where I grew up um, was on a farm, and uh, there were many Kosa speakers. Um, and I, I was sort of, I like to say, I was like the white sheep of, of the <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I became part of the clique uh, from a young age, and uh, we exchanged, we exchanged stuff. You know, I gave them. Uh, I gave them Jewish guilt, and uh, <laughs> they, they gave me white bread and hidings. And, and uh, I, it was quite confusing for me. In fact, I developed a sort of cultural, um, you know, some people have multiple personality disorder. I had multiple uh, culture, multicultural uh, disorder. Like, for example, when I was 13, I wanted to go to the mountain to be bar <laughs> so, And did you? No, no. <laughs> Went to Temple Israel. <laughs> Temple Israel. <laughs> now, you are known to um, to have indicated that if you were president, you would make Zuda dancing an Olympic sport, and more importantly, you would pay Lobola for Helen Zeller. Wow, where did you find that? <laughs> On a DA website. No, no, no. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. Uh, I would make Zulu dancing, and, and I don't know about paying Lobola for Helen because. Um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> and what was your question? <laughs> the question would have been, how many cows would you have paid for? Oh, how many cows? Well, I mean, now we're going into, what, what, what numbers are president going into uh, with, with Bongi? Bongi what? Officially four. number four. four. Officially, officially four. four. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's already, I'm, I'm not sure how many cows we're talking about, but I know that Mantla Mandela, um, Mantla or Platyskela Mandela as well. <laughs> he recently paid 16 pounds for a Frenchman from Reunion Island and, uh, and now he's going he's to take them back because it didn't go through and the cows, you see, because you've got to choose the right cow now he's chosen sort of posh cows because they now they got all Frenchified when they were on the island so they're like, we are not, uh, we're not flying back on the uh, uh, economy we're not going uh, we're not flying cattle class we want to go so yeah <laughs> they won't they won't they're, they're demanding cows <laughs> uh, what advice are you going to give the president on his uh, betrothal again? Is that the English word? His betrothal? Uh, well, betrothal, is betrothal the, the engagement or the actual um, thing? What, what is it? Um, I can tell you what. One thing I, I would advise, Jacob, is a lot of people, even non-Jewish people, are, are incorporating some of the Jewish rituals into the wedding ceremony. Yeah. Okay? Some people are using those canopies. We call it the chuppah. And, and other people are breaking glass. Have you seen that now yeah, at non-Jewish yeah. weddings? Everybody wants to break a glass, which I think is a wonderful thing uh, for, for, for a man. Uh, has anybody, you, you have met some Jewish people and you broke a glass? Yes, yeah, because it is the last time you're gonna put your foot down. <laughs> Testify to it. <laughs> <laughs> you brave yourself. That's because your wives are not here. <laughs> Testify to that. But would you, would you ever see yourself marrying more than your wife? Uh, no. Next question. <laughs> is, is she listening right now? She could be. She could, she could, she could be. Because of course she's at home. No, no, she, I don't think she is. I think she's actually barefoot and pregnant over a hot stove right now. So. No, man, she gave birth. She got me pregnant again. She just gave birth. So, man, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this is your second one. What does it feel like? being a dad again? Um, it, it does feel a little bit stressful, you know, you, you, you're kind of concerned about the, the, the first one and how the first one's going to respond to uh, the second one, um, but you're kind of less worried, like there's no way I would have let the second one, the first one due to the second one, what could be done in the summer, <laughs> you know, I don't even know what I'm talking about, I haven't slept for 36 hours and, and it's just, no, I have slept, but I haven't, and um, it's great. What are you going to do differently with this one? I what think you did. generally you're just a little more relaxed. Is that right, parents of more yes. than one? You just kind of, yeah. you don't really care anymore. Sure. <laughs> 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 Whatever, the, you drop the dummy on the floor, just put it back in. <laughs>
Oh, oh my word. And, and we, we, we're referring to the little one as the new baby because uh, the baby hasn't been named yet. No, no, no. That's, of course, another uh, tradition uh, of the Jewish people, which is um, that you name them and chop them at the same occasion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's always some Jewish woman in the back. It's barbaric! <laughs> A rabbi going, he can't feel anything. You can't promise you can't feel anything. We don't need that. We don't need that. What did my wife say she's going to put on there is like an anti, anti, um, what do you call it? Anesthetic cream. Anesthetic. I'm going to put the anesthetic. I'm putting it on it. I was like, you don't need it. You know? If you look in the, in the Torah, in the third chapter of Exodus, you know, the Jacob never put anything on that. <laughs> have you at least thought of names? I mean, have you? Yes, we, we have thought of a couple of names. Of course, he was born on the 12th. Of April, which is um, our, our president's uh, birthday, we were thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! We, we obviously the first. My first thought was Zuma Rabinovitz, but of course. <laughs> Has already got in there with that, so I'm uh, <laughs> thinking Shorozi would be a better option. <laughs> or just love pets. I mean, you, 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 you do know that you'll be like marking your child for the rest of eternity. But it's important. No, the rabbi's going to be doing that. Good point. You know, actually, <laughs> Africa, on, that, on that topic, you know, that's also, there, there are many traumatic choices for Jewish parents. One of them is who you're going to choose uh, as, the, as the rabbi. And uh, this time, we, we decided to be different and go, go with someone different. We found an Afrikaans rabbi, Pippi Sneeman. And we, <laughs> we actually met that guy from Lavender Hill called Tony Kaufman. <laughs> You do know that the reason why I would never marry a Jewish woman is because I understand that um, if the mother is Jewish, the child is Jewish. So imagine if I were to, if we were to give birth to a boy, you after, and me. after a <laughs> woman, oh, yes. um, and the boy would then have the child, as you refer to it, after yes. eight days, and then of course when it turned 17, 18, they need to go again. Yes, it and then you've like got nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> Sound of comedian, you put people in front of them and then they just feel the pressure to be funny and stuff. But no, a lot of the time I'm not. Um, my wife doesn't laugh much at any, anything I say. Uh, my son, I think, is perhaps the only one at home who regularly, I mean, um, finds me, well, I think he does find me entertaining. Um, I I actually, because um, I decided on the day of the, his baby brother's birth to just lighten him up, because they say it can be traumatic, so I told him a joke. Not a short one, quite a long joke, and he listened. He's two, three months, and then he, he listened the whole the whole way through, and, and at the end, he pissed himself. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas! <laughs> Nicholas, who's that? Yeah, that made you feel good, right? Like, 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 yeah, stop that. Stop, stop oh, that. Oh, that, that. That's your feel um, does she have to listen to your to your like new material before you test it out there? Mm, with, with the no, you know I, I used to do that. I used to test stuff uh, stuff uh, out on her, but then then I had to stop that. But she does offer like before the show, she'll be like, "Do you want to hear? Do you want me to listen to to any?" And I'm like, "No." Um, so not not that much anymore. And 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 you say no because she's like your harshest critic or something. She she uh, yeah she's a tough she's a tough audience. Tough one. I actually like running stuff through with Jan over here. We do a lot, run a lot of jokes by her on Friday morning. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, she's she's and she's a genius. You, you don't know about that, that woman, but she's very funny. Did you know that? You knew that. I, I knew that because yeah. I work with her every day. Yeah. Jan is our technical. Just watch out. She could be after your job. You, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she won't. She won't call herself Africa though. She'll call herself I don't know, Europe. <laughs> I've always thought Prague is a good name. Prague? 
Prague, yes, Prague. Imagine Prague Rebellion. Do you know that's how Malawians say Prague because they mix up the L's and the R's? Prague. <laughs> I know this because I've spent time in, in Malawi and it's, they what say, they, they don't say Malawi, they say Marawi. What were you doing in Malawi? I was working for a, 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 on a theatre project. And then I, I flew there. I flew there on Air Marawi, <laughs> and uh, it was quite scary, I must tell you, because the the the, the cabin announcer will come on there. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Lunch <laughs> <laughs> uh, will be served shortly. <laughs> Please enjoy the fright. <laughs> Kenya, with the Kikuyu speakers, they also mix up the L's and the R's. Like, for example, um, uh, this one guy, and then we were talking about our president, and he wanted to have a conversation about our president, and he was like, oh, Mr. Zuma this, Mr. Zuma that. I said, um, well, what do you know about um, our president? He said, ah, no, it's got a big erection coming up. <laughs> Courage to take the pillow to court and sue him for five million. Isn't it seven, seven million? Or, or seven. something like that. Yes. Do, do, when you're writing stuff about him and you're going to share it on the stage, do you ever go, hold on, I better be careful because, no. you know. No, no I don't. I don't because I'm not paying the legal fees. <laughs> Who is? You are. <laughs> Now, you're doing something which I believe is absolutely silly, but it is supporting an incredible cause. You're deciding to summit, is it 12 summits on the Plata Cliff Gorge? Um, it's the Plata Cliff Gorge, That's and what? it's nowhere near top. But um, we are trying to do it as many times. I think last year I might have done three. Uh, so it's, um, it's that gorge. Uh, is that, am I pointing in the right yep, direction? I, I think, think you are, yeah. Uh, at the front of Table Mountain. And uh, the idea is to walk up as many times as you can in one day, from from sun, sunrise to sunset. to sunset. Thank, are you are you doing it this week? Yeah, yes. I'm helping organise it. You're helping you organise it. Helping so, organize. so I've got someone to, to correct me <laughs> if I make any mistakes. But but we go up 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 up, and then the, you come down every time with the, the cable car, and as many times, and we get people to sponsor us per summit. All right. And how many times are you hoping to do? Uh, this year, I'm, I'm, I'm probably only going to, uh, we do it in teams of two, so my partner Adam, I think, might have a heavier load uh, uh, this year, because I, I've been sick and not training and have a child and all sorts of other excuses, <laughs> which I will <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 um, I have a child. Well, that, that, that that I don't know, I don't know, I'll have to test it out on the day. And then we're raising money, actually this year we're raising money for a school in Joslova Park called Sinanjongpo. Uh, and already um, they produce amazing results. I was saying this morning the pass rate there at that school, since they've gotten funding, has gone from 25% to I think almost 100 in 2011. Wow. So uh, it's really a, a cool project. <laughs> and, um, asking people to, to, to sponsor us, you can do a minimum of 100 rand. 100 rand, and how do they? How do people sponsor? So they uh, they go to the website, which is charitychallenge.co.za, yeah. and then click on sponsor. And uh, and then you can see who's participating and my name and, and face name and face uh, just because I said the other day um, my face is there and then Mother was like well I mean how's that going to know it's you and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you can click on us and sponsor us okay. Okay. and it's happening this Saturday it's happening this Saturday can people come and climb with you can they walk up and yes run? yes you can come and do anything you like in the spirit of of celebrating the seventh natural wonder of the world, you can actually come and climb in your socks and sandals as most German tourists do. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy yourselves. Enjoy yourselves. But of course, if you uh, uh, prefer to part with your money further, it's uh, what's the website address? Charity Challenge. Charity Challenge. Challenge. Coming up next, we have a wonderful moment of comedy uh, with Nick Rabinowitz. <laughs> No, we're playing ads in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's happening right now. Does anybody want to ask Nick a question? Go ahead. Yeah, well, Nick, you're proudly South African. Your take of the Olympics team kit. 
the Olympic team kit. Um, am I, have I missed something? I know I've been out of action for four days. It's been out uh, It's been sponsored by a Chinese company. Oh, uh, Chinese because company. Because no South African company wanted to come to the um, game, I suppose, with the with the kind of ball that they were asking for. Uh, well, the Chinese. Well, I mean, I think that's a, I, I think it's a pretty appropriate choice, given that they are our new uh, political overlords. <laughs> um, and I, but I do, I do think maybe we could have done like a Chinese imitation of the Chinese imitation mm. because that's what I was thinking would happen in a few years when they take over everything and then you go down to like, um, where's uh, Anissa's? Is that in, in Weinberg? Anissa's. Weinberg, yeah. Weinberg, yeah. Weinberg, yeah. yeah, to order your, your, um, Gatsby. your takeaway Gatsby chow mein. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I can imagine that that's the way we go. I mean, they're manufacturing our stuff, our, our clothing. It's going to be food. Next, you go down there, you're know, like one Gatsby Poloni. Poloni! <laughs> Congratulations on the new boy. Thank you. Tell me, when your mother was pregnant with you many years ago, did she feel yes, funny? I as well. <laughs> what? Did she feel funny? Did she feel funny? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I we'll have to ask her that. Uh, if she felt, I, I imagine she did. I imagine she. I think she had a craving for for pickles and peanut butter mixed with um, beef stroganoff. Because that's a woman, I don't know, a woman here, who's had some, what are some of the interesting cravings you've had during pregnancy? Shout, shout them out. Anybody? What? Talk. Talk. <laughs> yes. Sex. Sex? Okay, yeah, that's... <laughs> that's cool. Um, that's help, that can help induce the, the baby uh, uh, as well. Um, but my wife, actually, this, this time, she didn't, she didn't want anything. She just didn't want... Um, and Durban, that was her only like thing. She had a very strong uh, dislike of Durban during during her pregnancy. <laughs> Durban, uh, Durban yeah. how, how did it go? Oh, well, she was antenatal. Let's take one more question from the gentleman in the white shirt. You no, we got radio oh, sorry, you didn't have to. Okay, no, never mind, never mind, no, man, no man. you didn't have a question. Oh, here's a question, here's a question, question right here. on the front row. Uh, I think, following up on the material. Uh, material, the movie, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you thinking of a new career direction? Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I really enjoyed being in the in, in the movie. I was actually with Riyadh this morning, and he's now going to be in Long Walk to Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a joke. He's going to play, um, he, he's going to play um, Katrala. Um, Ahmed, Ahmed Katrana, yes, is that right? Yeah. And um, I, I was actually offered to play uh, the, the role of Goldberg, uh, Dennis Goldberg, one of the Ravonia trialists. I've turned that down because um, I, I, I think I'm too tall to play the Jew. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too tall enough to play Mandela? Well, no, because that's what uh, um, the casting director said is there's nobody in this country, no actor, South African actor, that's tall enough to play Mandela. He's 1.9, he's very tall. And, <laughs> That's why no, 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 we're getting a guy from England to play um, to play Nelson. Which I, uh, what, what is your take on that? Because well, Jay, Jay, I agree Jay with the, Hansen, for example, the Creative yeah. Workers Union who were like, nah, this, this, how, how is this guy going to say <laughs> and, uh, How is he going to say oh, no. and I, Oh, clearly he's just going to say Kunu and Ravi <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, was Henry Taylor too short, too tall, too short to play Shagazul? Was Riyad Musa? Too short to play Riyad Musa. No. <laughs> was Shorty to play sh short to play? No. Tom Cruise is a hobbit. What are we trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> Next thing, no one will be short enough to play Walter Sassoula, and they'll say Nick Robinowitz isn't tall enough to play Tutu in the in the. Giant. I think that's the film we should be making, but anyway. The, the point that is made is that these are, these are phenomenally important stories, 
the story yes. of Nelson Mandela. I was making reference to Jennifer Hudson playing the role of Winnie Matigizela Mandela in the movie Winnie. Yes. Um, and we need to have these stories enjoyed and watched by as many people around the world as is possible. And one of the ways to do that is to cast a very famous international star. Yes, unfortunately with Idris Elba, we, we've hit a snag there because he's, he's quite, oh ladies, I don't know if any of you, I wasn't familiar with this guy, but he's very good looking apparently. Uh, and I think that's a predicament then to, to have a hot Mandela. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that, that really, that's like, kind of like thinking about your grandparents having, having sex. I just think it's a <laughs> tough question. <man. laughs> I actually think, to answer your question, I'm hoping that, this material I think has almost done a million dollars now. And, uh, and, and it, it, that, that's not the benchmark, but if it does even better, it could go uh, international. Which I, I think is fantastic, not not because um, not for the producers, but but for me, because <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have a share, I don't have a stake in it, but I think if, if we do really well, they'll make they'll make a, a, a sequel, they'll make a Jewish version, um, starring obviously starring me, and uh, we wouldn't it wouldn't be set in a, in a fabric shop though, it'd be set at, at like Investec. <laughs> Nationally and internationally, so I thought I'd give you this moment to just to just um, make us laugh. Uh, no, for the uh, last 27 minutes. Okay, and now the official uh, comedy moment. Well, I don't actually have one, but I thought I'd share with you. One of the things that happened in hospital after my wife gave birth on uh, Thursday, on Friday, the nurse came in and, and it was quite traumatic for her because she started shouting. She wasn't being nasty; she was just shouting, you know, like, "My darling, don't forget to put on your maternity panties." And, <laughs> You must clean the umbilical cord and stuff like this, and um, which I thought was interesting. And the umbilical cord. And the <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a couple of weeks prior to this, I went out to Hanover Park to launch a what's called a perinatal mental health project at the the, the MOU, the Maternal Obstetric Unit, in, in Hanover Park. And, and I was speaking to the midwives there, and I came home and I said to my wife, "These people are amazing. They're doing amazing things." There, and I think um, we should change from Constantia Burke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's a shame. I, I, I said to her, it's going to be lonely for you. You're going to be in that labor ward just on your own. Well, okay, well, there's going to be like the gynae and the midwife and the doula. Have you, so have you heard of a doula? This is, yeah. My wife wanted this. No, no, this is a woman who provides emotional and spiritual guidance. Um, <laughs> she plays like the pen pipes from Peru. <laughs> She comes from Nordic Comedy in Cobra. And I said to my wife, what if we went to, to Hanover Park? And obviously, the conversations would be different. Like, she'd be going against, nurse, excuse me, where's my doula? And the nurse would be like, can't you for doula? <laughs> <laughs> Doula's not here, it's on night duty. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing out this baby, screaming, you know, blue murder, and then the woman next door who was about to give birth was getting traumatized because she had to listen to. And I thought it's better if you put everybody in the same room and they can scream together <laughs> in unison, you know. And it'll bring people together. It's like a unifying, transformative thing, as well, because you'd have everybody, all South Africans together, the black woman in the white corner, yeah! <laughs> the colored woman on the other side, yeah. <laughs>